Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't you tell the person next to you tonight is your night. Come on, tell the person on the other side, say you're in the right place at the right time to receive a miracle. Amen. Why don't you take your seat? Praise God forever. Hallelujah. Apostle Richard, the lion-hearted. Hallelujah. Thank you for sharing about all my products. You know, I wrote that book on fasting and prayer. And then I realized later, if I would have changed the title and I would have called it Feasting and Playing, I could have sold millions of copies. There is a time for fun, though. Hallelujah. There's a time for eating. Praise God. You can do that after the service tonight. Hallelujah. Who was uh, not here last night? Raise your hand. Praise God. All right. Those of you that were not here last night, we're already in the glory. So we got a head start on you, okay? So get ready because the, the fragrances of the Lord will begin to sweep over you and touch you right where you're at. As God always confirms his word with signs and wonders following. Do you believe that? Yes. Praise God. Are you happy tonight? Yes. Glory to Jesus. Yes. Well, let's take our Holy Bibles. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Praise the Lord. It's a real joy to be here with you tonight in Leeds, England, enjoying the goodness of God. Apostle Richard and Susie, we appreciate you inviting us to be here, coming all the way from America, from North Carolina. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we greet you tonight with the love of Christ. Also, those that are watching on the Internet, we greet you in the love of the Lord as well. Praise God. That's what's great about the Internet. It makes us a um, kind of like a global family. Hallelujah. Well, tonight we are in Deuteronomy chapter 8, and I want you to drop on down to verse 18, and let's pray. Heavenly Father, let your word come alive. Let your Holy Spirit come and quicken your word. We thank you that your word is anointed. Let the life-giving power of your word touch us tonight in Jesus' name. We all agree and say amen. Amen. The Bible says, and you shall remember, you shall remember. Please don't forget this. I know it's a big book, right? And I know if you read through it, there's going to be some things that not going to, you're not going to remember all of it. But here's something I don't want you to ever forget. The Bible says, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power. Please say power. power. To get wealth. Very, very interesting. It is the Lord your God who gives you the power to get wealth. You know, have you ever stopped to think that you don't need any power to get poverty? I can tell all of you how to get poverty. If, just in case, out of this large audience, maybe there's somebody who wants to get poverty, I can tell you how to do it. You don't even need any power. All you have to do on Monday morning, don't get out of bed. When you're supposed to go to work, don't go to work, just lay in bed. Stay there all day, and before you know it, this thing called poverty will begin to visit your life. Go to work on Tuesday or Wednesday, just lay there. And before you know it, bills will not be paid. And then the mortgage will not be paid. Then you start getting the phone calls. Hey, your payments are late. And see, you don't need any power to go into poverty. Why? Poverty is downhill. Gravity will take you downhill alone. You don't even have to try. Just stand back, don't do anything. And it can come into your life. But see, you need power to go uphill. You need power to get wealth. Tell the person next to you, what you need is power. power. Hallelujah. Tonight, God's going to give you the power to get wealth. Hallelujah. I want you to think about that. Now, I know that there's some people that might say, well, wealth is, is that's of the devil. We don't want that. Well, if it were evil, why in the world would God give you the power to get it? Right? I mean, if there's something wrong with keeping a poisonous snake in your house... I used to live up on a mountain. There was a neighbor down at the bottom of the mountain that actually kept a pet rattlesnake out in his garden. I mean, I wouldn't want to go in his garden. There's no telling where that snake's at. So I don't want the power to get something evil. See, God doesn't give you something to hurt you. God gives you something to help you. You always need to understand that God is the originator and the author of wealth. Woo, hallelujah. When you look throughout the Bible, you see that many of the great men and women of God were blessed with prosperity. It says that Abraham was very rich, not just rich, very rich in cattle, silver, and gold. The old King James Version says he was rich in livestock. Well, you might not want sheep and goats, but maybe you want to invest in the stock market. See, God make you wealthy in stocks and silver and gold. And then you look over at people like David. David was actually a multi-billionaire. Woo! Notice I didn't get one amen on that. Hallelujah. 
But you have to think about it. In his personal life, David contributed massive amounts of wealth out of his own personal financial inventory into the products that would go towards the construction of the temple that his son Solomon built. And you know Solomon brought the wealth, didn't he? That was known as the golden, the golden kingdom, the golden era, where there was so much gold that silver, they didn't even account it for anything. Woo, praise the Lord. But see, this, this takes power to come into this. I'm talking about Holy Spirit power, not just to talk in tongues. Although God wants you to speak in tongues, God wants you to be filled with the Spirit, but God wants you to have power to access your financial inheritance in Christ. I'm telling you tonight that your salvation is a full salvation. God did more than just rescue you from an eternal hell. God, through the shed blood of Jesus, has washed your sins away. But he didn't just leave you to struggle in life and to get beat up by the devil. Jesus overcame all principalities, all powers, while he was on that cross. Conquered them all. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says in Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 that he has redeemed you from the curse of of the law the curse of the law what is that everything that you don't want sin sickness disease poverty lack insufficiency never having enough living a life of constantly window shopping well all you do is you go around and you look through the window but you're always on the wrong side of the window and you're looking through the window you're thinking i sure would like to be able to buy that for my son I sure would like to be able to take my daughter in there and buy some clothes and shoes for her. I sure would like to be able to go in there myself and buy some things, hallelujah, as well as being a blessing for others. What, what do you need? You need power. You need power. Hallelujah. Your days of window shopping are over. Amen. Hallelujah. Tonight, the Lord is releasing a power for you to get wealth. Hallelujah. Remember, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Praise God. It talks about how this is for the purpose of establishing the covenant. Power to get wealth to establish the covenant. Hallelujah. Now the new birth, the new covenant through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's free. You don't have to pay a penny to get born again. It's by grace through faith. Not of works, lest anybody should boast. And you know if it could be of works, somebody would certainly boast. So it's by grace Unmerited favor through faith. But at the same time, how can a person respond to the gospel if they never hear it? I pretty much heard the gospel through radio. And it was the teaching of radio. Radio preachers that affected my life and began to pull me into the knowledge of like, hey, this is true. I want this. Then after I was saved and then after I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, I began to watch Christian television. Anybody watch Trinity Broadcast Network? I used to begin to feed spiritually on these Christian networks. But see, it cost money for Christian radio. It cost money for Christian television. It cost money to print books. Hallelujah. It cost money to have facilities to turn lights on and to do these things. That's why God wants you to have wealth. To establish covenant ability for people to hear and receive The eternal message that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Power to get something that you need. You need power. You need power. Tell the person again next to you, what you need is power. Praise God. You have to understand, I was raised in church all my life. Ever since I was a baby, my parents took me and my brothers to church. Three times a week. Sunday morning. Sunday night, Wednesday night, there are special meetings, we're there for that. But we're in the church all the time. We even had a pastor. Guess what his name was? Pastor Rich. R-I-C-H. He was the poorest man you probably ever met. And 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 you know what? The church made sure they kept him poor. We thought it was holy to walk in poverty. And that preacher would stand up behind that pulpit and he would just thunder and he would say, God doesn't want you to have any of this world's goods. If you have riches, you'll fall away from God and you're going to hell. And boy, everybody was terrified. So everybody in the church is eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Everybody in church is living off of crackers and creek water. Boy, there's some poor people in that church. But they made sure they kept that pastor poor. And every time. Every time that pastor would go up to preach on Sunday morning in his, in his suit, 
He'd walk up to where the pulpit was at. Me and my brothers, I have to be honest, me and my brothers got real nervous. We'd watch him go up to the pulpit. He'd walk up slowly to it. And then he'd bend over to get his Bible. We, we thought, oh dear God. We never knew how long those pants were going to last. His whole pants were so wore out that you just thought that any time that he's going to bend over, the pants are going to split right down the middle. Hallelujah. Lord, have mercy in the church. See, we thought we were being holy. We didn't know that we were actually being stupid. We never talked about Deuteronomy 8.18. We never talked about things like that. So we cooperated with poverty and it jumped on us. Now this was a country church, not a city church. But it don't matter if you're in a country or the city. You better watch out. That thing will try to get on you. You must stand on the word of God. But in order to stand on it, you have to know what the revealed will of God is concerning that subject. Praise God. So we all grew up poor. You know what's funny? Is that sometimes poor people don't know they're poor. If you're in it, you just think everybody else is like that. I didn't realize we were poor and broke until I grew up. And I was a man and I looked back and I said, Dear God, I grew up in poverty. But when you're in it, sometimes you don't know it. When you're walking around barefoot and everybody else is walking around barefoot, you just think the whole world goes barefoot. Woo, Lord have mercy. If somebody would have stood up and said, God gives you the power to get wealth, we'd have thrown them out the church. God had mercy on our ignorance. Hallelujah. But see, it's the seed of the word of God that brings you into victory in life. Hallelujah. And I'm not the only one that's had these experiences in life. I've talked to many ministers who grew up in a church system that the church was just bound in the clutches of poverty and was actually in agreement with the devil. I talked to a prophetess one time, a dear woman of God that, that today travels all over the world. She also has a real estate license and she sells very expensive properties in Southern California and Central California. And today she is a internationally uh, traveling uh, a prophetess and she still keeps her real estate license, although she hardly ever does it, just in case she needs to sell a million dollar home every now and then. Praise God. She told me that when she was a young girl, she was sitting on the front row in the church. And as a young girl, she knew that God had a calling on her life into the ministry. She knew that she wanted to be a minister. She wanted to grow up and be a preacher. She'd do anything to be a preacher. And she's sitting on that front row as a young girl. And she said that day, she said, she said, Brother Stephen, that day they brought in a guest speaker. They brought in a guest minister, traveling speaker that goes around and travels. And she said, uh, when he came in, he sat next to me. And he's going to go up and preach. And he sat next to me. And when he sat next to me, he crossed his legs like that. You know, sitting down, he crossed his legs. She said, I could see the bottom of his shoe. And when I saw the bottom of his shoe, there was a hole in it. There was a hole in it. And he had stuck a piece of cardboard into his shoe to cover up the hole so that when he's walking, his foot's not touching the dirt or touching the ground. And she said, Pastor Stephen, she said, I saw, when I saw that as a little girl, she said, dear God, I want to be a preacher, but I don't think I can do this. <laughs> I, I don't think I can do this. And see, she thought that's what God was calling her to. But then she began to realize later in life, just like I did, God wants you blessed. Hallelujah. See, it's when you get into the overflow that now you have flexibility. Now you have empowerment to begin to bless others. You need to, re you need to move from a consumer mentality to a giver mentality. <laughs> Jesus said, it is more blessed to give. Than to receive. We all know that receiving is fun. It is enjoyable. But there's something that happens when you give. And sometimes even when you give. And they don't even know who gave it. Hallelujah. Even big things or even small things. Sometimes my wife and I just be in the Starbucks drive through And we'll order our drink. We'll go pay for it. Then we'll say. The order. The car that's back behind us. What do they order? Oh they ordered you know 14, you know, 14 pounds of. Uh, food and drinks. Oh, we'll pay theirs too. And you pay theirs too and you're gone before they ever even figure out somebody's paid for their food. They pull up. You just, you just go around all the time. See, it says in Acts chapter 10 verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, right? Who went about doing good and healing, right? But did you notice it says who went about doing good? He went about all over the place doing good. That's what's going to happen to you. Yeah. Praise God. 
How do you do that? You have to be empowered. You have to be empowered by the Holy Spirit with the wisdom of God flowing through you. Your days of making wrong decisions with money are over tonight. Amen. Some of you, you've made these exits. You took an exit. You thought it was a good idea. You didn't know it was going to put you in debt. Some of you took another exit. You made a wrong move. And now you have found yourself in financial difficulties. But it is your decisions that decide your wealth. You're going to start to make right decisions from now on. Amen. The power of God. The wisdom of God. The anointing of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You're going to leave poverty and lack so far behind, it'll be like a distant memory. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to tell the person next to you, you'll never be poor another day in your life. Tell the person on the other side, say, you'll never be broke another day in your life. You're going into the overflow. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lord, we give you praise. See, it's time for the church to get out of survival mentality. Just trying to survive. Just trying to work a job and pay the bills. That's not the kingdom lifestyle. That's called survival. God doesn't want you just to barely survive, just barely get on every week, every month. God wants you to get into the overflow. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, as you're looking there at Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, look at verse 4. Very, very interesting verse. Verse 4. Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. Did you know also that in, in chapter 29 that it said... It said the same thing, but it said a little bit more. It said your clothes didn't wear out, nor did your sandals wear out. It also tells you here that there was no foot swelling. Wow, I like that. But look, that's just normal type living. You have to understand that no woman wants to wear the same pair of shoes for 40 years. Please tell the person next to you, you know he's telling the truth now. I don't care if your shoes do last for 40 years. You know you don't want to wear that same pair of shoes for 40 years straight. Every day, every day, every day, over and over. The same t-shirt every day, over and over and over for 40 years. You know, it's like, now Lord, we thank you for the miracle that the shirt never wore out. And Lord, I, I thank you that my shoes, they still work. There's some good sandals. Thank you, Lord. And you know, my legs, they feel good. I'm glad I can walk. But dear God, I, I sure would like to have a different color than brown. Lord, I'd like to have a blue shirt. Could I have a red shirt? Could I have a pair of Adidas or Nikes? Lord, could I have a pair of dress shoes? See, it's time to come out of the land of just enough and go into the land of more than enough. Look, I know it's months away still. I know it's still months out. This is going to be the best Christmas you've ever had in your life. Yeah. You just watch and see. You're going to have a Christmas unlike any of you ever had before in your life. Hallelujah. Be all kinds of things beneath that tree. Hallelujah. In the garage. In the house. For others. For others. For others. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you tonight. God tonight is going to give you the power to get wealth. Amen. Shout power. power. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to go over tonight to Mark chapter 4. Let's hear the master teacher himself talk about this. Lord Jesus, we give you praise. The angels of financial prosperity are here in the meeting tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Lord, we praise you. And those angels are going to be released later tonight in this meeting to go out and cause you to help help you come into a new level of financial prosperity Amen. verse 13 and he said to them do you not understand this parable how then will you understand all the parables the sower sows the word and these are the ones by the wayside when they hear when the word is sown when they hear satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts these likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. 
Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering in, choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. But these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word, accept it and bear fruit. Some 30 fold. Everybody say 30-fold. 30 30 some 60. Say some 60. Some 60. And some 100. And some 100. Praise God. Hallelujah. The sowing of seed. The word of God touching the spirit, the heart of a man or a woman, producing various types of harvest in your life. I want you to understand tonight that it is not God who decides your harvest. It's you. It's you, how you respond to the seed, the seed that you sow, how you respond to the word, what you do with the word, your obedience to the Lord. Remember Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Praise God. I don't love money, but I love what money can do. Money, it's neutral. It's a tool. It's like a microphone. A person can either, either grab the microphone and go out in a uh, dark stage and perform in a, a dark type concert and say things that are unholy. Or you can use the microphone in a church service and bring glory to God with it. It's a neutral instrument. It's the same way money is. It responds to the hands of the person that it's in. And you can use it as leverage to bring people into the kingdom of God. Just as money can be used as leverage to bring people into the kingdom of darkness for those who are on that side as well. Praise God. Hallelujah. But the sower sows the word. The word of God. It has the ability to produce a harvest. 30, 60, or even 100 fold. Now, here's my definition to bring this all down into a shorter definition. Here's my definition of the 30, 60, and 100 fold. Good, better, best. Did you catch that? What's good? God's happy about it. You did good. God's pleased. God's smiling. It was good. But then there's, see, there's good, then there's better. Oh, hey, I like that. Oh, okay, Lord, this is good. Glad I held out for the better. 30, 60, then you have 100 fold. 100 fold, God's very best. God's absolute best. Don't just limit it to a numerical value. Because I've seen occasions where people have sown, and I also have sown, and have reaped over 100 times. Praise God. But it really means the overall picture, good, better, best. Tonight, I don't want you to settle for good. I want you to go for the best. Good is good. I'm happy with good. 30-fold, good return, better than nothing, right? But oh, when you see God's best for your life, hallelujah, you'll be so happy that you walked with God and that you served the Lord. Praise God. Because I was raised for years and years with teaching that taught me that God wants you to be poor. That Jesus was just an old, poor, barefoot preacher walking around looking for a bologna sandwich handout. All that junk began to affect me. By the way, bologna's not kosher. He couldn't have eaten a bologna sandwich. Hallelujah. They were wrong with what they told me. <laughs> and Jesus wasn't poor. Have you, has anybody ever met a homeless person on the street of Leeds? And you go up to the homeless person and you say, Hey, do you have a treasurer? Oh, yes, I'm a homeless person. I have no money. Here's my treasurer right over here. And by the way, I've got 12 men working for me full time on staff. You never see anything like that. You won't find it in Leeds. You won't find it in London. You won't find it in New York. You won't find it anywhere. But Jesus had a treasurer. Why? All the money coming into the ministry. The largest ministry in the nation at that time. 12 men full time on staff. And all of those men, I believe, were married. And they had wives and children. You just can't take these guys and let the wife and children starve. Full-time employment. Treasurer, full-time men on staff, and 70 others that went before him. Get meetings set up. Get the campaigns ready. Let the coming city know that he's on the way. Woo! Glory to God. Money was flowing into that ministry. 
So much money coming in that even Judas was stealing out of the money bag. And the ministry is still doing fine financially. Jesus went about doing good and healing, right? Acts 10, 38, went about doing good all the time. Why? He had overflow. Let's help the poor. Let's get that person a meal. Let's get that person a pair of shoes. Let's get that person a new car. Oh, Pastor Stephen, they didn't have cars back then. Let's get that person a new camel, okay? See what I'm saying? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I was told for years and years and years, God wants you to be poor. You're not supposed to have any of these world's goods. If you do, you fall away from God. And I believed it because that's what I was taught. I didn't have enough sense to go into the Bible and study it myself. And so when I was in my early 20s, the devil launched a great attack against my life. I was just beginning to feel, to sense, maybe God could have a ministry for me. But it was just a distant thought. I had just gotten filled with the Holy Spirit. And I believe the enemy saw the potential of what God could do in my life. And the enemy thought, we'd better take him out now before he gets any more momentum. And so I went into work one day and they said, Stephen, we hate to tell you this, but we are, we are, we are cutting back on the workers and we need to let you go because the business is not very busy right now. And I said, well, hey, I'm one of the best workers you got, though. They said, yes, we understand that you're an excellent worker, but the others have been employed longer than you have, and so we have to let you go first. So I was laid off on my job. The very next day, my car stopped working. I did not have the money to get it fixed. And so it's like a whole series of events begin to unfold day after day after day in my life where I began to be attacked from the spirit realm. And it affected the natural realm where everything began to go wrong for me. And I ended up in a place with no money. I couldn't find a job. And now the car's broken down. And this is before the days of cell phones. So it's very difficult to call. I began to also to fall further and further behind on my rent. But I thought, oh, I've got some help. I, I've got some help. I know that far across town, I have, a, I have a family member, a rich uncle. How many of you like to have a rich uncle? Well, I had a rich uncle. And I thought, I'll go see my uncle, and maybe he can help me. Just give me a little help for a couple of weeks, get back on my feet, get working again, get things back up again. So I went and saw him, and this man was a very religious man, very high up in a very prestigious Christian university. And I went and I saw him, and I said, Uncle, I want to explain my situation. I've been laid off on my job. My car's not working. I don't really have any money, and I'm having all these financial problems. Is there anything that you could do to help me out? And he pushed back in his big leather chair with his executive mahogany desk. He pushed back from his, uh, from his desk with his chair, and he just looked at me. And he said, what's wrong with you young people that you can't get your life together? And when he said that, it jolted me. It jolted me. And I said, well, Lord, I'm not going to ask anybody else for help. I knew I could not ask my parents for help. I love my parents. They love me. But I had I had also told them that I had been baptized in the Holy Spirit and spoke with tongues. And they said, you've lost your mind. You've gone crazy. Tongues is of the devil. And I knew that if I had asked them for help, they would have said, renounce tongues and then we'll help you. I said, I'm not going there. I know this is real. And I don't know why I'm going through all of this. But I'm sticking with the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Praise God. So I found, my, I found myself in a place where the church couldn't help me. I went and told the pastor before I saw my uncle. I told the pastor what I was going through. He said, Brother Stephen, he said, take courage, my son. You are going through a Job experience. <laughs> I said, well, why does it have to happen to me? I said, I don't want this Job experience. Oh, just be patient, my son. Eventually, you will come out of this great trial and tribulation. May God's mercy be with you. And he, what he should have done is rebuke the devil. Say, I break this spirit of poverty off this young man in the name of Jesus. Let's go get you a job. Let's get you some help. Praise God. But I forgave him, and he's a good man. He just didn't know either. He, he loved me, but he didn't know either. Hallelujah. I forgave my uncle, forgave everybody. They're good people. They just had an off day. And they, they I found out later my, my uncle was going through a divorce. So he's all upset in life. His, you know, behind the scenes, he's struggling. And he's trying to hold his world together. Behind the scenes, it's all falling apart. But I kept going through this experience. Things got worse. I told, I told my roommate that I was sharing a room with. I said, look, you and I are splitting the rent. This is your daddy's house. 
And I said, I am not going to get further and further behind. I'm just going to move out. He said, well, he said, Stephen, where are you going to go? I said, I'll just live in my car until I find the job. But I'm not going to keep letting the rent get further and further behind. I get further and further in debt. I said, what I'll do, I said, when I get some money, I'll come back and I'll pay your dad for the time that I did stay in the house. Up till then, I'd always paid my rent on time. But when this happened, I fell behind about two months. And so I said, tell your dad that when I get some money, I'll come back and pay him back. Now remember, I'm in my early 20s, right? I didn't know this. Later on, that friend of mine that was my roommate, he told me that he went and told his dad what had happened, how I had to move out, didn't have the money, would one day come back and pay it back. And the father said to that young man, he said, son, I want to teach you a very important lesson in life. You will never, ever see that guy come back and pay this money back. That's just the way the world is. It's a cruel world. And you can never expect to have hope or care for anybody else except yourself. He said, you'll never see that money come back. Wow. <laughs> okay, so while I'm homeless, living out of a car, I had a P.O. box. And although my car wouldn't work, one day I walked all the way to the P.O. box across town. And I opened up the P.O. box, and there was a bunch of junk mail. Threw the junk mail away. And there was a check from the government for a tax return. And you know what? It was just enough money to pay off the landlord, to pay off the rent from where I used to be at. So I, I went and cashed that check and went and gave it back to my old roommate and he took it to his dad. And I found out later that, that that son told me, he said, when I gave that money to my dad, he almost fell out. He said, dear God, there's still hope in the world. <laughs> somebody, somebody actually kept his word. Hallelujah. So I found myself living in the car. The car... It was not working. So I said, well, it's, it won't start. It won't run right. And if I ever do get it started up, it may just quit on me and shut down forever. So what I'd better do is find a place to park it for a long time. So I drove out of the city and drove all the way out in the country, 12 miles out into the country, pulled off the road, drove through bushes, literally this high, drove the car through bushes and parked it next to a stream that ran underneath the railroad track and every now and then a train would go across the railroad track. It was actually kind of scenic. It looked kind of nice. But I parked it there and the car shut down and it stayed shut down. I never could get it started back up again except for a few occasions that were miraculous which I'll tell you about in just a moment. So I thought, well Lord, I guess I'm stuck. Here's where I'm at. Nobody can help me but you because you're the only one that knows I'm here. <laughs> I said, the church couldn't help me. I said, my family doesn't understand what I'm going through. And I know that the baptism in the Holy Spirit is real. So, Lord, you're going to have to help me. And I had put in a cardboard box in the back of the car. And I took it out. And there, underneath the trees, out in the country, I set up my cardboard box. But this was the poor man's cardboard box. It didn't have a roof. It just had a bottom and four walls going around it. Praise the Lord. And I set up camp in my little cardboard box. At night and during the daytime, I would make a little campfire and I would just, um, you know, have some warmth. But I had, a I had a main problem. No money and no food. How many of you know that's a problem? And so I would get so hungry. And this is also where the Lord began to teach me fasting and prayer. <laughs> the Lord will not waste any experience that you have been in through life. Even a negative experience. If you give it to God, He will take it and give you beauty for ashes. And so I smelt like smoke. When you're around the campfire, you smell like smoke. You can't get it off of you. Well, Pastor Stephen, why don't you go apply for the job? Well, what are you supposed to do? Walk in smelling like smoke. You haven't had a bath for five days. You look dirty. See, it, the, the further you go in poverty, the harder it is to come out. That's why you need power. Amen. That's why you need power. Amen. And you may not be in poverty, but to go to the next level, you still need that same power. Amen. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. And so days turned into weeks. Weeks turned into uh, a period of time that began to stretch out that I even forgot what day it was. I didn't even know what month it was. It was total survival. Just trying to stay alive. Praise God. And just because you see America and, and you see Hollywood and New York on TV, there's still a problem in America with poverty and homelessness. If you still look beyond the glitz and the glitter, you'll still see there's broken elements of society even in America. Praise the Lord. And so days went by, weeks went by, and before I knew it, it began to slip into the months of winter. 
and it began to get cold. It began to get so cold the car won't start. It's getting harder and harder to make a fire and I don't have any food. And it just got so, and the only time I can get food, walk in the town, go back behind the pizza restaurant and hopefully they, they threw out some pizzas that didn't sell during the day. Hallelujah. Pastor Stephen, poverty is beautiful. Poverty is horrible. Poverty is from Satan. I know. Anybody that tells you poverty is good has never actually tasted it. It's filth. It's part of the curse that Jesus shed his blood to redeem us from. And I want you to know that you never have to be poor another day in your life. There is redemption for you through the shed blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Praise God. I'm back at my campfire. The campfire is just too much work. I couldn't even start the campfire sometimes. Just go sit in the car. The cardboard box was so cold because the wind keeps coming down. <laughs> and, you know, sticks would fall on you in the middle of the night from the trees. It's very difficult to sleep in the box. So I go in the car. And so it got colder and colder. I turned on the AM radio. The car wouldn't start, but I could, I could turn the ignition backwards. The radio would come on. I heard the weatherman. Tonight, stay inside. It's going to be cold tonight. It's going to get down to 18 degrees Fahrenheit. That's minus 7 Celsius. Tonight, minus 7 Celsius. Stay inside. All animals and pets, bring them inside. We don't want anybody to freeze tonight. I thought, oh, dear God. Turn the radio off. Lay down in the seat. And I got so cold. The temperatures began to drop and drop. And I heard an audible voice speak to me. Let me say this. Just because it's supernatural doesn't mean it's God. Discern the spirits. I heard an audible voice speak to me and say, Tonight, you're going to freeze in the car. You're going to die in this car tonight. How many of you know that was the devil? <laughs> Pastor Stephen, what voice was that? That was the devil. Hallelujah. I said, no devil, you're not going to kill me. I said, I don't know why I'm in this mess. But I said, God's going to help me. And so I got out of the car and I went, I went to go read my Bible in my little box. And as I laid there shivering and cold, trying to read my Bible, I said, God... I said, it can't get any worse than this. How many of you know your mind is like a rubber band? If you stretch it too much, you can snap it. And you can lose the elasticity. And now your mind is messed up. I felt like my mind had been stretched and stretched. And, and I, I felt like, God, unless you do something, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose it up here. Woo, glory to God. I feel the anointing. And I tried to read my Bible. And I said, God, it can't get any worse than this. It's below freezing. The wind's blowing. I said, it can't get any worse. And when I said that, it started raining. <laughs> and the rain started falling on my face. I said, oh God, it did get worse. And I took my Bible. I took my Bible and I got mad. Not at God. I got mad at the devil. I said, Lord, I've been told all my life that to be poor is holy. But I said, dear God, I sure don't feel holy. I said, Lord, somebody has lied to me. I said, get me out of this hell situation. God said, I'd be glad to do it. See, the whole time I'm cooperating with the devil. Hallelujah. Praise God. May God have mercy on our ignorance sometimes. <laughs> God said, I'll help you. The next morning I woke up, I just, I just felt better. I felt like I was on the right path. I felt like I knew that what I had rejected, rejecting poverty was right, and that God was going to help me. And I said, Lord, help me out. He said, I will. He said, do you remember that other church that you used to visit? I said, oh yes, that was a nice church. That was a good church that talked about faith, that talked about the grace of God, that talked about the love. You put a bunch of chicken in, but it was empty. He came over there with that big bucket. He said, let's count it all up. He said, let's gather it all up. We'll take it to the back room and count it. Woo, hallelujah. And we counted it, we grabbed it all up, and we, put, we took it and put it in the bucket, and we went, we went into the back room. We, let, we spread it all over the bed, put it all out on the bed. We started counting. $5, $20. Now we've got, we're up to $30, $52, dollars is getting higher, $108, $142. He looked at me, he said, hey, this is a pretty good offering for a small group. We kept counting, $195, $223, dollars I started getting nervous. I hadn't seen money like this in a long time. $312, I thought, dear God, I'm going to be able to get a cheeseburger tonight. Hallelujah. $347, $388, $400, and it stopped at $418. And he jumped back and he said, Stephen Brooks, he said, do you know what this is? I said, I said, what? He said, this is the 100-fold return. He said, I want to ask you a question and don't you lie to me. 
I got afraid. I felt the glory of God on him. He said, last week, in that meeting last week, did you give four one dollar bills? I said, I did. He said, my wife was watching and saw you do that. You put four one dollar bills in the basket? I said, yes. He said, this is the one hundred fold return. Now watch. That night, I got four hundred eighteen dollars. That night, I got a full-time job. That night, hired that night, on the spot, full-time job. Start it three days later. Start it three days later. And it was an awesome job. That night, I also got a place to stay. They said, we'll give it to you for rent-free for three months, just to get you back on your feet. <laughs> Within two weeks, I was already paying rent because I was making such good money. I said, I don't need the three months. I'll just, I'm ready. <laughs> And God turned the whole thing. Turned the whole thing. And then God began to establish me in his word. Then God began to send me to the nations of the world to say that God doesn't want you to be poor. God wants you to be blessed. <laughs> Hallelujah. The 100 fold return is God's best for your life. If I had not obeyed the Holy Spirit that night, I don't know where I would be at today. But every blessing I have in life is because of obedience to the Word of God and the leading of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. One time I had saved for a year. I had saved for 365 days money for the television ministry. And after saving for a whole year, I looked at my money. It was thousands of dollars. I looked at it and I thought, God, it's not enough though. It's frustrating when you have something, but it's not enough. And it was thousands of dollars. I thought, wow, Lord, I could get some really cool gear with this, but it's still not enough. Everything about television ministry is expensive. And I said, Lord, it's not enough. It's, it's a lot, but it's not enough for what I need. And the voice of God came unto me saying, what you hold in your hand is not your harvest, it's your seed. I said, Lord, I've saved for a year. He said, it's not enough though. I, I looked back behind me. I actually thought like Mike Murdoch had snuck in the room and was talking behind me. How many of you know him? He talks a lot about money. And, uh, I, but he's made that expression before. If it's, not your, if it's not your harvest, it's your seed. I actually heard God say that word for word to me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But it was the voice of God. I said, I'll sow it. I'll sow it. And he showed me where to sow it to. And to a great man of God with a worldwide television ministry. Praise the Lord. Praise God. And ever since then, our media ministry has been growing and expanding. Do you know on that same time when the Lord said, it's not your, it's not your harvest, it's your seed. He also told me something else. He said, get your wife her wedding ring. Because for 17 years we had been married and she was wearing her grandmother's heirloom wedding ring, which was very beautiful. But I had never been able to pull together that extra to get her a ring that was just like, uh, you know, like really, really nice. I'm talking something really nice. The Lord said, go get your wife the wedding ring that she wants. So I first of all sowed the ministry seed that God told me to sow. Thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I sowed it. And then I took my wife with personal money and went out. I said, Kelly, get whatever ring you want for your wedding ring. And she got a ring that was absolutely beautiful. A specialty wedding ring where the diamonds were called chocolate diamonds. Hallelujah. They're beautiful. A very rare type of diamonds. And uh, it was absolutely beautiful ring. The moment I bought that ring for her, within days... God just supernaturally replenished the money that I had spent for the ring. The thousands and thousands and thousands that I put out for the ring, just instantly God just brought it right back in and filled it right back up. I sure am glad I obeyed the Holy Spirit. Anytime there's a miracle moment and we're there now, all you have to do is do what God tells you to do. You don't have to give a thousand pounds unless the Lord tells you to give a thousand pounds. Because some of you can give much more than that. All you have to do, though, is do what the Holy Spirit tells you to do. Whether it's 300 pounds or 30 pounds or $4. That's all you have to do to get a miracle. Do you understand with the Holy Spirit there's no pressure? This is the key to power. Power to get wealth. Much of that power is knowledge. The Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge, lack of kingdom principles. Move with the Spirit. When there is an anointing, move with the Spirit. There is an anointing right now 
for you to sow a seed and shatter the spirit of poverty off your life. To break its power forever. Look, not only off your life, but down through rest, throughout the rest of your genealogy. That your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren will never ever know poverty or lack or insufficiency. You're going to break it so bad that it will never rise up again within your whole family lineage. Well, Pastor Stephen, Jesus might come back tomorrow. Well, if he comes back tomorrow, you'll be blessed. Amen. But also, I know that there's still much work for the kingdom to do. The Bible says this gospel shall be preached to all the nations. And I know for a fact that it hasn't. There are entire ethnic groups that have never even heard the gospel before. They don't even know who Jesus is. So that scripture must be fulfilled. We still have work to do. There's still time. You need to be empowered to prosper. I want everybody to stand up. Please close your Bibles and stand up. God has blessed my life because I have learned to operate by His kingdom principles. My wife and I, my family, we travel all over the world comfortably preaching the gospel. I don't have no cardboard in my shoes. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> we have nice vehicles. We have a beautiful home. We have an executive ministry office that's beautiful in every way. God has touched every facet of our lives with His goodness. And He's going to take each one of you to a new level. Hallelujah. I said, yes, I remember that church. I had been visiting there. And there was a Bible study that I had been attending, like a midweek service that I had been attending. The Lord said, get back to that meeting this week. I said, well, Lord, I said, that's all the way across town. I said, the car won't start. He said, you just get ready and get it in the car. I'll take care of the rest. <laughs> okay. So, I haven't had a shower and I don't know how long. There's no showers out in the forest. So, I go over to the creek. I splash some water on my face. I tried to get the smell of smoke off of me. I tried to comb my hair back. It was real easy because it was so greasy because I hadn't washed it in so long. And I tried to make myself look presentable. And then I got myself ready and I sat in the car. And the Lord said, just lay hands on it. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I command this thing to start. And I turned it the ignition. And it hadn't started in so long. But when I turned that ignition, it goes, boom, boom, and started up. I said, oh, oh. I said, I'd better go quick before the thing shuts down. And I put it in drive. And I spun out, hallelujah, and drove through the, wheel, through the woods and through the bushes. And I got back on the road. And I got out on the open highway and crossed all the way across town. Back in the town, go all the way across town, and I pulled up to that meeting. You have to remember, some of these people used to know me, but I had dropped off the edge of the earth. They hadn't seen me for months and months. They didn't know what happened to me. So I park, and I parked the car blocks away. I didn't want nobody to see that car. Hallelujah. That, that car, I finally sold it for salvage, for scrap. Yeah, I mean, whoo, Lord, have, have, have mercy. <clears throat> well, I got out of the car, walked a couple blocks, Knocked on the door, went and this was a house prayer meeting. This was a part of the church where it was overseen by one of the elders who was also an evangelist. And he was overseeing this, this like cell group meeting. And so I came in. They said, oh, Stephen, we haven't seen you in a long time. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've been, uh, I've been busy. <laughs> Praise God. Well, you know... Help yourself. We're going to get started in a few minutes. There's some cookies and there's some, uh, uh, some uh, like, uh, like lemonade. I think it's pink lemonade over there. I said, oh, I, thank you. I don't mind if I do. Praise God. I'm over there eating like 12 to 15 cookies, <laughs> drinking lemonade. Ooh. I was so wired with sugar. I had such a sugar rush, I was awake. I was, so, I was on it that night. I was so alert with all the sugar I had in my system. Praise God. So I sit there, and it's time for the meeting to start. And the, the, the leader of the cell group was an evangelist. And he came out, and he began to give a nice, a nice talk. And he began to talk about, you know, the goodness of God, how God loves you, and stuff like that. And I, I could feel the presence of God again. Oh, I said, thank you, Lord. And he said, as he got to in the end of his talk, he said, he said, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be going from Texas down to South America. And I'm going to be taking medical supplies and in order to get the medical supplies, I need to raise some money. And so, right now, I'm going to receive an offering. Now, here's the homeless man. The first time I go back to a church meeting, here's somebody raising an offering. And here I'm sitting in the meeting with nowhere to live, nowhere to sleep, with no food. And I, I'm just, I'm like, wow, this is really interesting. So, he said, we are now going to receive an offering. 
and there's about 25 people, maybe 28, 25 to 28 people in this little cell group church meeting. The actual church had over 10,000 members, but this is a cell group meeting of that church. And so I'm sitting there, and the offering basket is coming around the circle, and I'm sitting there, and the whole time I had been through this experience, the weeks and the months and all the horrible experience, the whole time I had kept four $1 bills in my wallet. I always thought to myself, if I'm, if I'm about to starve and die, I can at least go to, to McDonald's and have one good meal at McDonald's, then walk out into the woods and die somewhere. <laughs> so I had four $1 bills. I never spent them. I heard the audible voice of God Speak to me. Give your four dollars. The basket's getting closer. I'm getting nervous. Ooh, if I give these four ones, there's no turning back. Ooh, there's not even a last meal. I'll just die. And when I heard the Lord speak that to me, and it came from this side of me, I heard another voice on the other side, then speak. Then another voice spoke up and said to me, If you give those four dollars, you'll starve. I thought... You stupid devil, I'm already starving. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, I'm going to, God, I'm going to give them. I'm going to give them. And I pull them out real quick so I didn't change my mind. I pull them out, took those ones out, and the offering basket came by, and I just threw them in there. Ooh, didn't want to touch them. Ooh, I just wanted to do it. I so wanted to obey the Lord before I changed my mind because of my dire circumstances. And I gave it. And the offering basket went around and ended. The man of God prayed over it. The meeting was over. And the meeting began to dismiss. Walk out the door. Walk two blocks down to where I hid my car. Get back in the car. Boom, start it up. Thank you, God. Drive, drive all the way back out to the country. Everybody else goes home. Drive out to the country. Everybody else goes to their bed. Drive out to the country. Everybody else goes to their heated house. Drive all the way out to the country. There's my cardboard box. Praise God. Get out of the car. Lay down in the box. And the devil said... He said, you fool. He said, you could have had a last good meal. He said, now you're going to die in agony. I said, I said, devil, let me tell you something. If I die, I will die having obeyed the Holy Spirit. But something tells me that because I did that, I will not die, but I will live. And he knew I meant it. He shut up when I said that. A week goes by. Somehow I survived a week. It's like God supernaturally sustained me. I didn't really even get hungry. Hallelujah. And a week rolled by and the, the Holy Spirit spoke to me again and said, go back out to that meeting. Go back out to that meeting. I said, oh, I said all right, Lord, I'll go get ready. Go over to the creek. Get all spruced up. Whew. Make yourself look nice as best you can while you're living out in the forest. Comb your hair. Praise God. Try to get the smoke off your clothes. Hallelujah. I said, Lord, you're going to have to help me with the car. He said, I got it. He said, just get ready. I took, I took some oil, some oil that I had, and I poured it on the engine. I said, that was my way of anointing the engine. And then I got in the car and turned over the key. Vroom, vroom, started up again. I said, oh, God, here we go. And drove all the way out to that meeting. But when I walked into that meeting, this time I couldn't fake it. This time I felt like the rubber band that had been stretched a little too much. And the man of God saw me. He said, Stephen, what's going on with your life? And his name was also Stephen. He was a much older man than I. I said, I said Stephen, I said, I, I need to talk to you. He said, let's go into the back room. So we went over into a side room here at this house, at the cell group church, cell group meeting. And we went into a, a private room, sat down on the bed. He said, what's going on? I said, oh, Brother Steve, I said, I don't even know how to say it. He said, just go ahead and say it. I said, I've been living as a homeless person. I don't have a job. My family has rejected me. Uh, the church that I came out of actually thinks what I'm going through is good, but it's horrible. And I said, I don't know what to do. I said, I'm without hope. I said, I have no money, no, nothing. My car doesn't work. And he said, he said, Stephen, he said, if you will come outside with me to the group out there and tell the group what you just told me, God will do a miracle for you. You know, you never want to go out and tell somebody your life's messed up. You never want to go out to people that you respect and you're trying to put your best foot forward. You never want to go out and say, hey, I'm a homeless bum. How are you doing? You, you, nobody wants to expose their weaknesses. But I swallowed pride. I, I told him, I said, I'll do it. Will you stand with me? He said, yes. I said, okay. He said, come on. He said, come on, Stephen, let's go. 
We walked out of that little room. He opened the door. We stepped out. All eyeballs turned towards us. He said, everybody. He said, Stephen has an announcement that he needs to share. I said, my brothers and sisters, I said, I've been a homeless person living out of my car, living out of a cardboard box. And before I could just get the story out, I just started weeping and crying. I couldn't control myself. Just started weeping and crying. And we'll read. Lord, we give you glory tonight. Hallelujah. The angels of prosperity are coming into this room right now. In the spirit, I can see them in the back by the sanctuary wall in the back. Hallelujah. 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 Something's coming off of you tonight. And something awesome from God is coming on you tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You are being positioned for a remarkable year of increase. And God is going to set it up so this will be the best Christmas you've ever had in your life. We're not only... Are you happy with your family's needs? But you will have an extended blessing deep into the lives of even others. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise and glory. Right now, everyone, please lift your hands to the Lord. If I could have the keyboard, please. Because we know that music helps carry the anointing of the Spirit all over this auditorium. Lord, we thank you that you are the one. <laughs> you are the source. You are the one who gives the power. It comes from you to get well. Now, I want every person to make a commitment in your heart right now. Just say to the Lord, Lord, I'll use it for your glory. Lord, I'll use the wealth for your glory. Oh, yes, your life will be blessed, but the gospel must be preached. Say, Lord, I'll use it for your glory. <laughs> Lift your hands high all over the room right now. Oh God, I give you praise. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, I ask that by your mighty Holy Spirit, who lives and indwells each person here tonight, that you show them what they must do, whatever that seed is that they are to sow, that the Apostle Paul said, he that would reap a bountiful harvest should sow a bountiful seed. Lord, right now, power. You place it in their hands. They are the ones that determine what the harvest will be. So Lord, show them that number, the seed amount they are supposed to sow. Show them right now. Show them right now. Lord, we give you praise. Husbands and wives, be in agreement. Lord, we give you praise. And we thank you. According to the word of God, we will be hearers and doers of the word of God. Now, Father, we praise you. Do you got it? Do you have it? Did the Holy Spirit show you what it is? Please take your seats. Let us now prepare to sow the seed. I would like for us to bring that special basket that offering basket the miracle offering basket right here because in just a moment you're going to bring your seed up here praise god hallelujah okay so prepare your giving whether it's cash or check if you're going to make out a check you can make it out to the ministry of stephen brooks international glory to god let's worship the lord while you're preparing your special seed Before we sow the seed, let us sing this song of worship to the Lord. After, the, after we worship the Lord for a moment, we're going to bring the seed into the holy soil. Hallelujah. You're on holy ground tonight. Are you ready to worship? Are you ready to worship? Let's worship the Lord with this song. Amen. Then after this, we will sow our seed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's a few more people still working their way to the front. It's time to praise the Lord now. It's time we need one praise song. The Lord wants a shout of praise. Can you say yes? He's not done. He's not done. That anointing is already touching your seed. The angels are about to be released. It's time to praise the Lord. Praise and worship team, you got one song of praise. Church, you got one song of praise for the Lord. Get ready to lift it up. Come on, this is your time to shout. Get happy now. One song with all of your heart of praise. You are going to get a miracle. Yes, Lord.
Give him your best praise. Time to get happy. Praise the Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards the basket. Father, in the name of Jesus, your people have obeyed you. You have, you have positioned them now to receive a mighty miracle. I thank you, Father God. Let your anointing come and touch this offering now. Let miracles be released into their lives in the name of Jesus. Ministering spirits, angels of God, go forth and bring forth the miracles into the lives of God's people. Shout amen. Amen. Anybody here tonight, you do not speak in tongues. You are not yet filled with the Holy Spirit, but you want to be. Come down here now and you will get it. Come down right now. Come down right now. Anybody, you do not speak in tongues, but you want it. You may want to ask the person next to you, do you speak in tongues? Come on down now, because Jesus will fill you tonight with the Holy Spirit. Come down and line up at the front. Come quick. Come quick. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. You've never spoken in tongues before. Tonight is your night to be filled with power from on high. Come to the front right now. Come to the front. Everybody that wants to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Men, women, boys, girls, children. Come to the front to be filled with the Holy Spirit tonight. If you do not speak in tongues, you need to be in this line. This is your line. <laughs> if you do not speak in tongues, get up here right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ask the person back there next to you, do you speak in tongues? If they say no, tell them, come on, you got to get up there. Come on with them if you need to. Help them out. Glory to God. Tonight, God's going to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Apostle Richard, come stand right here, please, man of God. Hallelujah. Everybody just stay right where you're at. Apostle Richard, stand right here. The fragrances of the Lord are beginning to come into the meeting. Last night, the Holy Spirit took my wife into the Spirit. She saw what has been resisting the work of God here. It's a territorial spirit that does not want you, this church, and this ministry to take land of ownership. But we break it in the name of Jesus. We break the territorial spirit. And the Lord says you shall own multiple properties, pristine properties, properties that would make others righteously envious in the sense of how did you get a beautiful building like that? So we break the territorial spirit that has tried to hold back this mighty apostolic work. It breaks now in the name of Jesus. Receive a new property from the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, we can deal with it because... You get over in the spirit. Okay, everybody that's up here right now, is everybody saved and a believer? You love Jesus? Raise your hand if you do. You're already saved, right? When you got saved and born again, it's different for everybody, but in some ways the same. Maybe you got saved at home. Maybe you got saved in church. Maybe you got saved watching the man on television preach to you. But in some form or fashion, you basically said, Jesus, come into my heart, right? And he did, right? He saved you. And if you had black eyes before you got saved, after you got saved, you still had black eyes, right? What part of you got born again? Your spirit. On the inside, you were born again. 
Maybe you felt something, maybe you didn't. But you know what? It doesn't matter. The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Shall be saved. You did that by faith and God saved you. Is that right? Every one of you are saved, washed with the blood of Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you already. But tonight, Jesus wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit in the overflow. Amen. He wants you to be immersed and baptized in the Holy Spirit. See this bottle of water? There's water in it, right? But when it hits the overflow, it starts coming out of the top. Amen. Tonight, you're going to hit the overflow. Amen. Praise God. The Apostle Paul was, was ministering on a journey. He came across 12 men. And he said, what type of baptism did you have? The men said, we had the baptism of John. Oh, he goes, oh, that was a baptism of repentance. He said, have you heard of the Holy Spirit? All 12 men said, no, we never heard of the Holy Spirit. And the Apostle Paul laid his hands on those men, and they were all filled with the Spirit and spoke in other tongues. I'm going to come right down this line, right down here. I'm going to lay my hands on you. I'm going to ask Jesus to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And he will fill you with the Holy Spirit. Are you ready? Now, you might feel something. You might not feel anything. You take it by faith. When you were saved, maybe you felt something. Maybe not. That, that's great if you're dead. But you take salvation by faith, right? All of the promises of God are accessed by faith. I'm going to lay hands on you. Jesus will fill you with the Holy Spirit. As he does, I just want you to stand there for a moment. And then in just a minute, we're going to do something together. Are you ready? Hallelujah. Praise team, are you ready to praise the Lord a little bit more? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm coming right down here. Is there also a second row back behind as well? I want to make sure I don't miss anybody. Praise God. Everybody out there that's already baptized in the Holy Spirit, just relax. Enjoy yourself. We will all pull together in just a moment and something special that God wants to do. Raise your hand if I missed you. Raise your hand. Praise God. Praise God. Did I miss anybody? Raise your hand. Wave your hand at me. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Anybody else? Did I miss anybody? Be filled with the Spirit of God. Be filled in the name of Jesus. Anybody else? Wave your hand at me if I missed you. Don't go anywhere. Stay up to the front. It's about to get real fun. If I just prayed for you, come back up to the front. Woo! We're about to have a lot of fun together. It's real easy. Give yourself a little room. Spread out. Spread out. Come on. Of them is that this is in the man of God when he come, he is bringing a financial anointing. Praise the Lord. I didn't want to bother him by stepping in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But this moment, God is going to do something special for you. I have already prepared in my heart. Praise the Lord. What I want to put in here please whatever god will lay on your heart if you don't have that money here now when i was here the lord was ministering to me about pastors 
praise the Lord. You are a pastor here right now. You are going through challenges. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lika suka baka. Mika tula sutaka. Ika mataka suka. Hime katusa kuta yaka like makatusa. Yakama yakama tataki ya kutasa. Kimelika ika tiki ya kutaba. Suma tulaka sike katalaka. Sumuka ya ketesa kata ika. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Malakuma sulekati. Ika la musu yakamula ki. Samayaka, Samayaka, Tuyaka, Miketeke, Sakuyaka. You are a pastor, you are a man of God. Your ministry is under a financial burden and yoke. There is a door that is being opened for you right now. That you must solve from your ministry and you must solve for your own life. You are struggling. There is, yes, Lord, Mikatu, Sakuyaka. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Your business is struggling. God promised you finance, but it's getting tighter and tighter. It's becoming hard. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say praise the Lord. Are you ready to sow your seed, believing that as you drop it in this basket that God will touch it and bring back the 100-fold return into your life? What does the 100-fold return mean? God's best, right? God's very best coming back into your life. It'll come back in more ways than just numerical. God will touch every facet of your life. Are you ready? Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's come and bring the seed. Bring it forth from right where you're at. Just begin to bring it forth. Hallelujah. Right where you're at. Walk forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come in faith. Sow your seed and come in faith. Hallelujah. Say praise the Lord. Praise God.